Hi everybody, welcome to Boost Your Employability. This is part of the CIM Marketing Club webinar series. And I'm excited about today uh, because we've got a, a guy called Andy Fowler who's, who's going to be talking about um, account-based marketing. So what it is and chatting a little bit about how he got involved in that and also giving some tips in terms of what makes a good account-based marketer and uh, be, but before I do that, before I bring Andy in, I just give a bit of background on Andy because um, it's only fair that we do that. Uh, so Andy's had um, a really interesting career to date. He's still a young man, but he started out in the creative sectors, kind of managing and co-producing uh, for events and, and running events for local artists in the, in the creative sector. And much of that was around comedy as well. And then when he moved into marketing, he took the typical route as, as a lot of people do, which is getting involved in a, in a junior role. And then he worked his way up into having several management roles within marketing, which is where he is today. And um, I'm not gonna to talk too much about that because there's probably something I've, I've missed it in there. But the key thing really also to, to mention is that Andy's uh, worked across different industries as well, including education, hospitality, and as I mentioned, the creative industries as well. So, um, Andy, do you want to uh, jump in and, and let me know whether I've missed anything there? Hi, Johnny. Yeah, um, no, that was a nice summary. Uh, yeah, that's, that's more flattering than I expected. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a nice introduction and, and thanks for having me. No worries. Yeah, thanks, thanks, for, thanks for joining. Where are you today? Uh, I'm in Nottingham at the moment, so uh, not too far away from uh, where I typically work. So yeah, it's nice, but it's, it's, it's October, isn't it? It's getting grey now. So I'm talking to you from my home office and it looks a bit dark and dingy, but yeah. Okay, so, so is, that, is that something that you normally do? You're normally kind of homeworking or are you in the office quite a bit as well? I'm in the office probably actually, to be honest, most of my time. Um, I, I love being in the office actually. I do prefer to go in when I, when I can because I think part of what I get to do with my job, especially working in marketing, it's all communication and my superpower is that in-person communication that's how i get stuff done um, and, that, and that collaboration with people i think good marketers are really good collaborators they understand each other because they have to understand an audience right so i like being in the office i like collaborating with people in person i'm glad you mentioned superpower i want to get onto that but before we do that i think it's only fair that we ask you to talk a little bit about account-based marketing what it is and how you got into that um, I know that having done a few sessions with, with university students recently, account-based mar marketing is, is kind of a hot topic, but not everybody's aware of it. So do you want to explain yeah. what that is? Yeah, um, it's, I'll tell you what, it's actually a pleasure to talk about it because um, it's something that's kind of growing in a lot of businesses and I'm quite nerdy about it. Um, it's been a, probably in the last three or four years discovery for me and I've thrown my job into it, if you like. Uh, but all my colleagues get bored of me talking about it. Um, so it's nice to talk to someone about it who actually wants to listen uh, or finds it interesting. Uh, so account-based marketing, you're right, it's very fashionable. It's very, it's being bought into now by a lot of businesses, um, but it's been around a while, but I think it's taken a while for that traction or that the kind of businesses to really understand the return of a kind of a, um, a model like account-based marketing. So to give you a very top level overview, um, account-based marketing is a highly personalized approach typically lend it to kind of business to business marketing, which focuses on how you as a business can identify um, and, and target real key accounts for your business and determine the most uh, suitable accounts that give, will give you the highest return, the, the highest value by uh, making them your customer, right? So um, it's the ones you really want, the kind of the, the mountain, the Everest, the kind of, yeah, the, that's the big brand, that's the big account, that's the big company who I really want to have as a customer. And it's a, uh, about creating a personalized approach to kind of really give them a tailored journey and win them over. So um, it's a methodology that works very closely with sales and marketing. It's, it has to, it only works when you've got that true collaboration between those departments. Um, and it's about, making sure you're very, very focused on the type of account you want and the number of accounts you want to do it in a very personalized way, rather than, I suppose, what could be seen as more of a traditional marketing approach, which is a bit more, the term goes, prey and spray, right? Let's put that out there to a broad audience. Let's see how they land or engage. This is about going, no, we've made very conscious decisions to target a particular person. We've then learned about them. 
We've then discovered who they are, what they use, how they do it, and who the people in that organization are that will make decisions about working with us as a company, and we will then target them with very tailored messaging. Um, and the reason why ABM is, is, um, is so popular is because when it works, you can afford to throw loads of resource at it and you get a huge return on investment. But it's high state gamble at the start because in, for an audience to do that, you basically have to sign up for a long form marketing approach. Um, and which is why ABM is being more kind of increasingly growing with businesses now, because after two or three years of businesses trying this approach, they're starting to see all these massive accounts that they wanted the highest value start to come back. But it does take one to two to sometimes three years. So um, it is it is growing increasingly popular and you're seeing more and more companies take on this approach. And as a result, you're probably seeing lots of job roles start to come into the market like ABM specialist or ABM manager or uh, and that's kind of where my role has grown as well. Um, so, yeah, ABM in a nutshell, very tailored. There's, uh, it all kind of throws towards what a true ABM is, which is a one-to-one -one marketing. We are them, they are those, they are, they're the people we want to market to, one-to-one. -to -one. Um, and, and, and that's what I've been working on actually in my role in, in the job where I work now for the last two years. Brilliant, brilliant. So it sounds complicated to, to... Mm somebody who isn't a marketer like, like myself and perhaps somebody who's not yet worked in in marketing. So you, you talked there about the inter, interaction with sales department and that kind of piece having to work and, and it feeds into, into the marketing aspect and decision making, presumably. So um, on that basis, then, do you, are there certain skills and, and certain capabilities that you feel that you need in order to be successful as an, as an ABM? Yeah, so firstly, I would say a, a, a good understanding of the basis of marketing generally is helpful, right? Because I think what people see ABM as or account-based marketing as is, let's take our normal marketing approach or business as usual, and then let's get far more strategic. Let's get far more focused. So having a good understanding of how to build marketing campaigns is crucial. Having a good understanding of marketing theory, and these are the things I learned when I did a sim course, right? The, the fundamentals of how marketing works is great. Um, then the rest is very much a lot of communication, stakeholder management skills. Um, as I said at the start, like I like going in because I like to communicate with people and collaborate. Um, the best marketers are the ones that can that, that can really work with stakeholders and hold great conversations and collaborative moments and workshop and collaborate with each other, right? Um, so communication is key. Uh, and then also you're looking at a lot of kind of product, uh, pro, um, project management skills. When you're looking at account-based marketing, you're looking at going, I'm going to select maybe up to five accounts in a year. I can really truly focus in that tailored approach. So to do that, I'm lining up five big projects and I've got to manage these and I've got to show the results and I've got to be really granular. So project management and organization um, is really key. Brilliant. Um, so you talked about only being able to manage a certain amount of accounts and it being a bit of an investment for an organization at the front end, but then the rewards yeah. are, are there to be had. And uh, I saw a stat recently about um, organizations spend the most on account-based marketing than any other, any other type of marketing, which is, which yeah. is interesting, uh, definitely for you. Um, and I suppose where I'm going with this is <clears throat> AI, right? So AI yeah. is coming out. So, it, it does that does that change the landscape a little bit because if there's a capacity challenge then yeah. is, it, is, AI, is ai supporting that and, and how is it impacting um account-based marketing 100 percent uh, it will change things but it's not something we need to be scared of it's about how we utilize that and it's the same with anything like we've, we've had a lot of discussions in our workplace about ai and the use of ai and technologies mainly because also where i work as a tech company and we're looking at new uh, tech and software and processes right um and how that helps people not needs to worry people um and uh, one of the one of the biggest barriers is that with abm you, can, you because the amount of resource you have to put into an account you can only focus on actively so the use of ai and technology to kind of expand that resource or start to automate tasks is is huge 
Um, for example, I have a team where we will select our accounts and we go, okay, we're going to build a tailored web page for that account. We're going to build a tailored brochure for that account. We're going to put them through a tailored email journey so they get the right messages at the right time. We're going to dedicate one of our dedicated sales or business development representatives to email them and call them over a period. We're going to build that whole roadmap in front of them. So that's a lot of work to put into one account. So if you can utilize AI, and a lot of companies are looking at this to go, how do we kind of cookie cutter this approach? So even though it's very personalized and tailored, really you just need to make one model and then the AI will start to spin out the variations. So I want to target one business and I built that, but actually what the AI done is just rebadge it, rename it, and then make suggestions for you on how you can then tailor that. So it, AI will never fully replace human creativity or the ability to think in the way that we think. But what it can do is automate the process of redrafting or reworking pieces that can save a marketer time so we can then focus on the things that we need to do that's probably a bit more cerebral or a bit more creative that AI can't currently do. Okay, bullet. So it's it's more about uh, enhancing and, and supporting. Yeah. So it's in speeding of the... processes and, and getting rid of the burden of the admin, I think, is probably a, yeah, yeah, a yeah. key one. The, the stuff that robots probably should be doing and, and can do. Um, so what, um, how are you developing yourself in that space then? Or is, is it something that you you look at yourself or, or do you have a team that do, does that for you? Or are you using tools that are doing it for you? Well, we're very on, early on in our journey where we are with, uh, with what we do at uh, MHR, um, but we've, we're already seeing great results in what we're, we're trying to do. We've been focusing on the last two years of just building the most appropriate model. And as the team grows, trying to show how we can kind of facilitate more or do more with that work. But one of the things we're always conscious of is looking at, you know, what is the tech stack that we're using? Or what, um, you know, what are the pieces that we're gonna do that are gonna take that work from us? Um, but really, it's a tough one, but we're, because every, and every business will struggle with this and every marketer will find this when they come into the world of work is going, how can I do as much as possible with my time and resource and do it well? Um, because people only ever want more. You know, it, the problem we have with ABM is because it's worked so well, you might work with a sales team, you might work with different stakeholders across a business and go, that's so great for that personalized brochure. We should do that for everyone. And we, well, we can't, it's just physically impossible to do all that work. So we have to look at it and go, okay, this worked, this has got that result. What can I do with a team? So I, I said, as I have myself and someone else, and we're looking to grow our team because we've seen success in what we're doing and I work for a fantastic business that wants to invest in where we're growing. So I'm very, I'm very lucky and privileged to have that. Um, what we do is take our wins and go, how do we take that win? How do we carbon copy it? And how do we all start to automate that? So the work, we're not rebuilding the wheel every time. That's the main trick. How do we learn from what we've done and, and and not have to go through the same process? We can just make it easier and easier and easier and we can do more and more and more. And as the results come in, we can throw that back into a team and grow it. And then it should be, and that's why ABM is so, has so much potential and that's why businesses invest so much. Because when you get it right, it throws way more money back at you than what you put into it. Brilliant, brilliant. And it's not, um, it's not all about AI. Obviously AI is an enabler within that. So, um, if anybody's listening and thinking, I don't understand AI, or do I have to now go and learn about AI? Absolutely not. What Andy's saying is, is it's, it's an enabler. Um, and these things are still being adopted and um, we still need creative marketers. So that sort of thing then suggests to me, your response suggests to me, then you need to be a bit better at marketing strategy and a bit better at marketing campaigns. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Strategy is key. Um, so um, when I started, uh, a couple of years ago in the business that I'm, you know, we're working in now, we, 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 we were all about building an ABM strategy. We, and the business was saying, we want to start doing ABM. Andy, you've come in, we'd like you to lead this, develop this. First thing I did was read more books about ABM, read more blogs, go to webinars like this about what people are doing, learn from other businesses. Um, uh, and then it was really strategy building. You can't just run at it and start delivering stuff or trying to create content. You need to understand the world before you try and change it or do it. So, um, and my role now as it's grown as we've got a, a, an active new business ABM program running is actually to step above that, allow people to drive that and go, what's the strategy? How do I keep changing that strategy? How do I evolve strategy? How do I bring that strategy and move into another part of the business? 
So a good example is we run a strategy for all the new business we want to collect. But now we're looking at like, well, we've got all these customers. Surely we should be really personalized and tailored to them. How do we build a whole new strategy from that? So my career has grown from doing the doing and building and doing all the nitty gritty writing and creative stuff and building those programs to go, that works. You can do that now. We'll make it easier. We'll automate it. And I'm going to think bigger picture. That's good. Um, before we open up the floor to, to, to more questions, um, uh, not from me this time, uh, just, just to remind everybody that you can answer, sorry, ask your, uh, ask your questions. So just use the um, question mark uh, icon within, within the platform um, and then type anything in there and we'll do our best to, to get to those. Um, just, just one more from me, Andy, because um, I like hearing the sound of my own voice, but you talked about um, superpower earlier. Um, and that's that's really interesting to me because the whole kind of employability piece and if any of my colleagues ever listen to this they'll probably think you're talking about employability again but for me employability is, is much about having the technical capability to be a good marketer but also mm -hmm. look, touching on some of those transferable capabilities skills knowledges and behaviors mm -hmm. um and, and me knowing so, so just for, for those that are listening I, I actually know Andy because I used to work with Andy and we've kept in touch ever since. Um, so I know Andy as being a considerate person. I, I also think he's really creative as well, uh, and, and he's a really kind person. So Andy, I hope you don't mind me saying that, but the reason why I wanted to bring that up is I wanted to just ask around, I suppose, do you use that? Is that something that yeah. is your superpower yeah. in, your, in your daily life as a, as, as a in work? 100% and it helps, right? If the, your, the, your approach to life and your personality can, comes into your work and you can use the best parts of you to try and get the things done. Because one, you'll enjoy that work more, but two, there are definitely like different parts of the world of marketing that require certain skills that uh, some people might call soft skills. Well, actually, you know, there's nothing soft about them. They are really integral things. Uh, that people need to develop and that's where you really succeed in your career because lots of people can learn technical stuff lots of people can learn process and lots of people can learn ways that a business wants to work but it's who you are as a person that helps rethink how they do or become a bit more strategic and push things along and that's where marketers i understand this is why i love working in marketing because i think you're in a perfect place to really impact that because then at the end of the day like I remember doing my sim level four, right? My first day 101. Marketing is about being can you, rich. Can you, sorry, Andy, can you just explain what, you, what the sim level four is? Because people might not. Uh, so, I, yeah, so, I, so when I started, as you, as you explained earlier, I, I came in from a ground level up. I went from an events world and a production world into marketing. And I wanted to retrain. And I worked for an educational institution at the time, which encouraged me to do a sim course. Um, and I, so I did a Chartered Institute of Marketing level four, which was a very foundation course. So it was undergraduate level. Uh, and I, and it, that was basically three modules. And I did, uh, I did very much an introduction to integrated marketing. I did, um, I did like a foundation marketing module. Where I learned a lot of terminology and how that works. And then I did a module at the end about digital marketing and the, the upcoming trends about how it works. And it was brilliant because Actually, I found because I had certain experience just through through my life that I knew a lot of some of this stuff, but I could now really put it into context and put it into a and, and, and it was brilliant. It was really good. Best thing I did because it really gave me the foundations I need to grow as a marketer. Um, and that's where I got to where I am. So um, really recommended doing it. I would recommend anyone to do it. Um, but it enabled me to understand what me, what skills I have as a person my personal skills that can be applied to marketing. Number one, communication. Huge, we are communicators, that's what marketers are. We communicate what a business is trying to say to our target audience, but also we have to communicate what the business wants to do around the business. And we have to communicate to salespeople and product people and finance people and HR people. Like this is what our brand is. Now you might not understand it, but it's my job to make sure you do so that everyone becomes a marketer really, because we're all talking off the same hymn sheet because we want to make sure that the way that we're perceived as a brand internally is how we're also seen externally, right? If that's what we want to achieve. So marketers are communicators. So my superpower is the ability to walk up to anyone I want and talk to them and use my empathy and that niceness that you described. I wouldn't just come on here and call myself nice, but I'm glad you did. 
um, and build relationships and collaborate with people and understand that, okay, in, and I'm very lucky. I work in a company called MHR where we have quite a large marketing department and there are people in that department that are experts in data and market research. There are people that are experts in product and what, what we're bringing into the market. And there are people who are experts in building campaigns and strategy like the team I work in. And there's designers and there's writers and it's a gift. I, I love it, right? But my job is to be able to go, I understand what you need to do, what you need to do, what you need to do. And I have to make sure that what we're trying to put out there as a business aligns of who you are and how you think and how you work. So not only am I marketing really to my target audience, but I've got to use my stakeholder communication skills to market to the team to get the project that I want done. So market good communication skills, good stakeholder management is absolutely key. And that's that's what I like to think is my superpower. Talk to my team, they might tell you differently. Um, but that is that is integral. I think it's also important to actually mention that you don't have to just be like that or be like people like me to be a good marketer. The department I've just described to you is a good example of how you can be way more analytical. I'm a creative, probably very fluffy guy because I like concepts and I like to go, yeah, we're going to hit that account with this and we're going to do this branding and it's going to be exciting. But some people are like, no, my what where I get a kick out is going, give me all your data. I'm going to look at it, I'm going to read it, I'm going to destroy it, I'm going to throw it into different things and I'm going to manipulate it. And I'm going to tell you with real data what we're going to do. And I work with people like that. And working with people like that helps me understand that you combine those things and you, you become unstoppable with what you want to do. So you don't have to be crooky. You don't, you, you don't have to be creative and fluffy and that kind of textbook kind of everything's a vision person. You can be very analytical. Um, you can be very practical, you can be very project led. I work with a lot of people that work with marketing agencies as well as marketing business and businesses with the marketing departments. They all think differently. The more marketers you can have that think differently working together is a good thing. Brilliant. Love that answer. Great answer. Um, so I'm going to jump into questions from those that are tuning in live now. Um, first question is what are the key factors to consider when selecting targeted accounts? Um, and then kind of rolling into that question is how do you then know that that targeted account that you've selected is viable and worth spending lots of money and lots of time on? Right, that's it. Uh, this is crunch point number one, right? You have to get this right. Uh, and we're still working on it. We will always be working on it. We have to think about it. Um, you need to understand from a top level of your business what your business determines to be the most valuable thing for you. Now, commercial business, privately run, independent business, the biggest thing for us is how much money could we potentially get from that customer? And the priority will always be who is going to give us the most money if we win that business. So in order to figure that out, you firstly need to decide what factors of an account would uh, justify that high return on investment. I'll give you an example. Uh, say I'm selling, uh, I'm, I'm selling a piece of software and I am selling it to a, an account based on how many employees they have. So immediately I'm justifying which are the most high value accounts based on how many employees they have, because that's where, that's where the money comes from. So that's one thing you could be doing. You also need to look at it in terms of what your business goals and your business strategies are. Now, if you're a public business or if you're a charity, it might not be about revenue. It might be about brand association. It might be about going, okay, what's really important to us is that we win over like-like businesses or businesses that share our values. So they're the people we're gonna target first. So what you have to first do is identify what's the most valuable element for your business in terms of what a, a perfect customer looks like. And then in order to target them or to whittle that list down to who you should target first, you need to look at which ones are the best match for you already. And we do that based on how much you already know or what you know you need to know. So for example, selling tech software here at the moment, I want to know when, uh, what do the people I want already use? And what, how long have they used that system? What problems or limitations does that system have? And when are they gonna come into market? When are they gonna be reviewing that? Because if I know that, I suddenly know they've got enough people that's high value, and they've got, um, um, they've got a system where I know it's limitations and I know when they're going to look into market. So I can time that person that's going to engage with that account at the right time to go, 
before you come into market. I don't want to let you know that I know you're struggling with this. We have a system that's better. Let's start the conversation before your people need to make a decision on it. So it's about timing. So what um, it's who they are to you, it's how valuable they are to you, and it's where you think you can do something better for them where they currently are struggling. And if you can identify those elements, you can start to create a pool of people that you think are your strongest hit list. And then the main game after that is timing. Um, in a private businesses and um, selling cycles that I work in, businesses of this size tend to take maybe one to two to sometimes three years to make a decision. So I need to know if I'm going to start a very lengthy ABM process to target an account, I need to know that the system they've got isn't going to run out for another year and a half, two years, because if I do it and they're going to run out in six months, they've already made their decision. because so they've already had a team look at this and I'm just too late and I'm wasting all that resource. Does that help? Yeah, that's fascinating. Love that. Um, what about campaigns then? So if you, look, you've gone through all that, you've, you've identified the organization you want to target, what do you do to, to create a targeted campaign for a single organization using yeah. ABM? Well, there's, there's an interesting thing here because um, one thing I haven't mentioned was uh, what I'm trying to work with at the moment with what we do is called programmatic account-based marketing. And that is the idea of working with your big pot and then because they engage with you well, you go to a smaller pot and then you go to a one-to-one. -one. So it's the idea that, and this is where ABM stops being a standalone piece of activity and starts becoming business as usual or a method you can use in everyday marketing is the idea of going, okay, say we have a potential 4,000 people in the world that we could do business with. Why don't we call that our kind of one-to-many? That's the world. Why don't we throw that out there? And why don't we do our normal business as usual activity to them? And when they nibble and then there's something there and we know that they kind of tick off that high value element, let's throw them into a smaller pot. And when they nibble with that and we know they work, let's just target them on a one-to-one. -one. And a programmatic ABM does that. It creates a funnel that generates your own one-to-one -one accounts. However, a lot of businesses still focus on just a one-to-one -one marketing, right? Which is a one-to-one a -one ABM. Uh, for us, what that looks like is, firstly, having that machine tell us who are the people that are going to be in market in the three years. So we use that data list and we go, right, we know who they're with, we know when they're going to come into market, and we know that they're really valuable to us. Looking at a timeline, we will then build a campaign that hits them with a full marketing mix. And our marketing mix, and it's different for every business, but um, we we utilize digital comms. We uh, so we will we will look at what we can do to create standalone pieces of our website that no one else can see, but we can send it to them and go, look, we built this for you. This is just your interactive hub. So it's about making them feel special. Um, in the old days, ABM was a, make, make them a paper brochure and then mail it to them and hope that they read it and go, oh, isn't it nice that they made this this glossy brochure? But for us now, it's about digital. Going digital means we can track everything and we have so we can judge intent. So everything that me and my team do is to create websites or e-guides or generate um, or make conversations with salespeople or BDR people that everything that goes out, be it an email or anything or a webinar, is tracked. So we can go, John at this company opened it then, listened to it then. We know he's going to make a decision. So I'm now going to call him up. Or now I'm going to see that he's visited the website. So I'm going to go, hi, John, great that you did that. Lovely to see you downloaded that guide that we wrote for you. Um, I can see you lingered on that page. Let me send you something else about that so you can understand more about what we can do for you. It's all got to be digital led because if we're going to spend so much money and time on these accounts, we need to show that it's where, where we're going to keep investing based on what they're doing. Otherwise, we're flying blind. And that's why I hate sending letters. And, uh, posting stuff because you get nothing back. Marketers need data. Brilliant, thank you. Um, another question from, from one of the listeners is um, about studying alongside your university degree. I mean, I, I, I don't think I even know this. Do, do you have a marketing degree and did you go to university and, and study marketing? No, I um, back back in and you kind of explained it well earlier. Back in my events and theatre production days, when I was making events and kind of marketing them without knowing what marketing really was, uh, I did a drama degree, uh, and I and I learned so much about the 
communication element there, the transferable skills are so if you're a creative, especially a lot of all English literature or in anything in that world, I think, especially in the humanities, your transferable skills into marketing are so strong. Uh, do not underestimate those foundational skills you might have. You do not have to do a degree in marketing. Obviously, it's fantastic if you do. If that's what you know you want to do, I'll be honest, I didn't know what I wanted to do what time I was at university. Um, and then my careers changed and I and I went back to university. So I, I did a drama degree, I learned those skills, I did my career, and I went, no, I'm pivoting into marketing. So I went back into a university setting and actually studied while I was at work in my foundation marketing role. Um, so I balanced sim with, with my job and it was brilliant because actually applying what I was learning on a week by week basis into my job was brilliant. Brilliant, excellent. And Andy keeps referring to SIM. So um, some people know it as, as CIM, some people know it as SIM, but everybody knows it as the Chartered Institute of Marketing. Um, and ju just to add to that then, um, it's, I think it's important to, to, to let people know that there's there are different routes into marketing, um, as yeah. there are for, for, for many careers, but marketing probably more so than, than many, because marketing is everywhere, it's ubiquitous, it's across every industry, it's off, across every sector. And sometimes people stumble into it because if yeah. they work with smaller organisations, they can tend to um, be given or gifted the opportunity to, to do some marketing and, and promotion for their organisation or, or brand. So the different ways, and like Andy talked about there, um, if you are thinking about going to university or you are at university and studying marketing or not, um, it, it doesn't really matter. There's lots of different options and, and I'd absolutely encourage you to have a look at what we are doing it as an organisation, the so CIM, um, and because it, people have different ideas about how they want to learn as well. Um, but what CIM does is it, it produces lots of free content like this, which is great, and it gets people interested and knowledgeable about things. But also, we give people practitioner um, experience as well through the qualifications and the modules that we offer, and even bite-sized courses and training as well. So. Um, don't just think of it as going to university and, and moving on. Uh, but if you are at university, brilliant. Uh, you're in a good place as well. There's lots of options yeah. for you there. Yeah, and I think that's what I found just from my experience of, I, as a customer of CIM, right? Um, I um, I learned some foundations that I could just take away with me. And it's still to this day, I think it was only the other week I went back and went. But I think one of the first things I learned in terms of marketing strategy, and that's my thing, that's what I get nerdy about now, right, was uh, SOSTAC. And then who, anyone who does uh, CIM courses, you'll learn that first thing. And I was like, right, guys, let's go straight back to SOSPAC. Because uh, whenever I'm in doubt, whenever I'm stuck, the kind of, the, the strategy that I learned at CIM will get me out of the problem. So I just, even now, you know, I'm years down the line and I'm, I think I'm very good at what I do and I waffle about being an expert. I'll go back to the basics and go, there's the way out of the problem. And that was something that CIM gave me. So, and it's something that even if I work with people who maybe didn't have that level of experience, I would use to them and go, look, this is you could learn more about this by looking at this stuff. Brilliant. And there's no better way of, of, of learning things by practicing them. We can all sit and learn about how to how to do something, but unless you apply that. So it, it's, it's really honest and interesting yeah. to hear you say that you've still got that textbook and you refer to it and, it, and it's yeah. useful. Um, Brilliant. Uh, another question here uh, is in ABM, how does the business structure and uh, affect the managing accounts? Uh, it's very interesting. Um, so with ABM, we've talked about the fact that actually we're always looking for the biggest, highest value profile accounts. As soon as you start to identify them, you're getting a lot of senior investment and interest from the business into those. And I think what you need to do is be very careful on how you're identifying what your what the marketing responsibility is for those accounts and what the sales responsibility is for those accounts and then what any other form of the business's responsibility is so you can as a marketer go look i've built this program i've built this strategy but this isn't i don't own this outright this is a collaboration and it only works when both marketing and sales take equal responsibility so uh, when what you need to do is be very clear on this is a program that's going to achieve this by these dates and this is what this team will do and this is what this team will achieve and that is how you have to report it up but naturally you will find that you will get lots of senior attention on this because these are the things you know it's it's all designed about getting those high value results 
Um, so for me, it's I, I did a lot of like stakeholder management training in my own work that they could offer me, and I learned how I needed to firstly communicate how it worked because it was alien to a lot of people and they don't understand it. And some people still don't understand it, and that's fine. But it was learning how that I what I needed to do weekly or monthly to report upwards to make sure that people understood uh, what was working and what we were doing for these accounts. Because there's also a lot of perception change you need to do in a business when you're introducing a new way of working. Because with ABM, if I'm saying it's going to take me two years to win this account, the immediate thing is, well, this is it's going to take too long. I, I want results straight away. First thing I have to do is communicate to going, well, I'm not being lazy. I'm not, do, not doing anything. But all of these actions that are happening and that I'm going to report to you are going to give you a bigger picture of where we're going. So stakeholder, that stakeholder management is key. But you um, you do definitely need to make sure you're communicating to a high level, a senior level uh, on this, because you will, senior stakeholders, managers, chiefs, do not like not knowing what they don't know if they're asked about something. And the more you can communicate to them the, the, the detail you're doing without boring them with the stuff they don't need to know, the more they can get excited about the, the long-term thing you're doing rather than worrying that you're not doing anything. Yeah, if that's good. So I guess I guess you've got you've got people who are, are pressing the button in terms of where you apply the the budget and the spend. So um, does that then mean that what you're doing is is centralised? Is it is it is it a function that kind of sits in the middle as part of um, a direct directorate, for example? Well, for, for us, it's starting to be, starting to grow into its own thing, but we we have to recognise it as a, as a marketer. I'm in a team that's responsible for lead generation, right? We want to create new business. We want to go out there and get engagement from new businesses. So my activity and what I've done is strategies as part of that growth side of things. So you'll see job titles if you're going into the marketing world of growth marketer or used to be field marketer. And these are these are marketers who whose job is to build campaigns and go out there and create new business, right? Rather than maybe a product marketer. Whose job is to understand products and bring them to market or a designer or so i'm in a growth field because what i'm doing is bringing in a strategy that's going to get new business that's what i'm what i'm doing so i sit within that i sit within a growth team however abm has been so popular at the business that i work in and they've been so supportive and they, they, they've allowed me to grow that into going okay let's stop seeing abm as just abm and let's just see it as a strategy and what if you took the same strategy so you've done for new business in the growth space, you did it for customers, or if you did it for any other thing, how do we take this personalized model? And we've actually had a real perception shift over the last year from going, oh, Andy, he does ABM, to going, oh, Andy, no, he does strategic programs. It's just he uses ABM to do that. Um, and there's so many other facets and elements of marketing you can do that with as well. It's not just ABM, but um, it's about going, Let's take your brain and your expertise and apply it to the bigger picture. Sure. So as a result, my team is growing and we're kind of moving away from other stuff because we're taking our knowledge and not trying to do one thing, but use the same approach to do multiple things. And is that is that um, a conscious thing from a um, risk point of view and reward? Uh, yeah. So obviously there's risk there if you don't have the results. We're if you if some things work and you get the return, people are going to want to invest more into it. Yeah. Um, so the biggest challenge you have if you want to work in account based marketing or you want to do something with account based marketing is you have to prepare that it's going to take you a long time to get the results to begin with. And you have an upward hill battle at the start. But when those results come in, you have to capitalize them and you have to build a, a reporting model and a strategy that helps show you the progress on the way. Because otherwise you've gone from zero to a year and a half we won that account. It's like, well, was it really worth it? Yes, because I'm gonna show you from day one what we did and how all those led to that final decision. Once you can prove that to your manager and once you've gone, okay, this is the biggest business we could ever possibly win and it's given us, I don't know, four million pounds, right? Suddenly they're going, yeah, we need to do more of that. So that's that. the, the results speak for themselves and that's, I've been very, we're not very lucky. We've worked very hard and we've had a, we have a very supportive management of others that have seen results and gone, let's do more of that. We need to grow this. Brilliant. Love that. And, and I appreciate the detailed description as well. <clears throat> You're giving us a lot of insight here into, into your world. So, yeah, I appreciate that. Um, 
what what do you most enjoy about ABM? Um, I like that in a way <laughs> it's quite childish, but it's detective work, right? I just feel like I'm a, a private detector. Because, um, <laughs> um, and that's and that's really ch childish. So I'm I'm a creative person. I I love strategy, and I like thinking about how people work and using marketing and strategy to kind of get people thinking differently. But ultimately, I'm like ah. I want to feel like I'm in Mad Men and I'm doing some kind of crazy advertising campaign and it's all fun and I've got full control. And what I like about ABM is that you can't take, you can't target all the same, all these different businesses in the same way. You, you've got to really do your creative work and your detective work to find out about them and do something that's really clever that speaks to them and resonates with them. And you can do it really personally. And if you're really creative, you can get your teeth really stuck in. And some of the most fun that we have in my team is going, okay, we've decided we're going to target an account. Let's say hypothetically John Lewis, right? Let's go in their website. Let's find all those little words that they love using. Let's pull them out. Let's use them against them. Let's find who all the people are that are going to decide if they're going to buy from us and then target them and then find out what they like. Let's go into their web page and pull out their strategies. Let's look at all their adverts. How can we make some really funny, engaging pieces to throw back at them using their own content? Like it's fun, like, and you, you do that spy work, you do the detective work. And the luxury of ABM is it allows you to do that because you have to be so personalized. You can't afford to do that in a traditional marketing approach because you need to keep it light and you need to keep it brand level and push stuff out. This is about going, no, hold everything, detective, then be clever and then hit them with something and see if it lands. And I think that's quite exciting. That's the most personalised approach I've, I've heard, really, because that's not only you targeting things that they've used, but also to have the foresight and the wit yeah. to be yeah. human about it and create something yeah. that's novel like that. And then for me as well, I, I come from like a comedy background, right, and theatre background. As soon as I can get creative with language and I can make people laugh or I can engage them on a humorous level and I can be human or what I think is like just a bit more different, that I get a kick out of doing that. Sure, I imagine. <laughs> I don't know what it's like to be funny, Andy. You'll have to let me know. Um, the, uh, what, what about kind of like learning then? So um, continuing development really around uh, um, understanding ABM. Are there any things that you can recommend, whether it be physical books, yeah. audio, yeah. Um, yeah. videos, anything like that? Um, well, firstly, CIM really helps. There's stuff there. Um, LinkedIn is your friend. Everyone should be using it. I know it's not the most fun social media tool sometimes because it's very professional, but it's very, very good. And I've been, I'm still to this day reading blogs about ABM and the future of AI, which was a conversation we kind of almost had a bit earlier. Uh, there, there are books. Um, the, the one, the one of the best things Sim ever did, CIM did with me, was give me a reading list when I started the course, and I learned all of these, but bought them all, and just went into a tangent. Um, there are lots of good books about ABM. The problem with a book sometimes is that by the time it's published, there's something else already new and advancing. But to do an, I, I, I bought a book. I think it was by Beth Burgess on ABM. And it was fantastic, and I would recommend it. Um, if you're a quick uh, reader, that's okay. If you're a slow reader yeah. like me, I'm completely on board with that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but there are lots of webinars you can go to. Um, you do, you, you Google. It's such a, it's such a, an accessible topic now that you won't, you will not struggle. But um, yeah, the, and, the, and there's lots of uh, marketing uh, uh, forums and sites that are all about marketing theory. And a lot of them, I've so having having read a lot of them, I can comfortably say are all talking about the same thing, which is reassuring. Uh, but you know, you're only ever a Google away from learning something. I, I think you've just got to throw yourself in and understand that the source is legit, and then and then and go for it. Precisely, it's how you interpret that, right? Yeah. Um, so, what about the um, the path into into CIM? Then um, you, you did talk a little bit about being a career changer, really. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. uh, can, can you just talk a little bit about that and and your? Can you can remember as far back as the membership bit as well? Yeah, yeah, I can do. Um, which is a bit, uh, so I work with someone now very closely uh, who did the same CIM course I did. Um, and we, we, we didn't, uh, we knew each other then, hadn't seen each other since. And then she started working at my job. And I was like, oh, hello. And we realized we both did the same SIM course. Uh, so I, I started, I had a career in a kind of event 
production and comedy production and theatre production and all that kind of stuff from my degree. And then I decided I wanted a bit of a pivot change and then I started a role in events and marketing. And to do that, I basically had to start at the very bottom of what marketing is. And I realised that I had some good skills for it and it suited me very personally very well. But I needed to, I wanted to brush up my knowledge or at least give myself confidence. Uh, and I was lucky enough to work for an institution, an educational institution that said, well, we'll support your development. Uh, we offer courses on marketing as a member of staff. Can we support you to get onto this course and sign up? So I went through the unit, I went for a university uh, course, uh, CIM level four. Uh, and I didn't look back really from there. Um, I did the course, it took me a year. I had some fantastic tutors uh, across the three modules. I learned so much. I went went away from it going, I want to do the next one. Uh, but I changed jobs and I then couldn't do it at the same in, in institution. Um, um, and it, I, I just, I, I've got the textbook still. Like as I said, I've got all the guides, I've got all the resources, I've got all the notes of the coursework I did. Because I always go back to it and go, am I, am I sticking to the theory or am I just, <laughs> sometimes the biggest worry I have as a marketer is that I learn how to do marketing for the business, how it wants to work, but not how marketing could be the best it could be. Mm -hmm. um, you can be a really good marketer, but you might have to challenge how things are done in the business to do the best marketing. Um, but I'm quite lucky, I work for a good company then, we're, we're doing exciting things. Um, I mean, so I, yeah, I, I, so. That's, that's a good, good approach. Um, I, just to add to that then, um, I guess in terms of determining your own path, because everybody's different, um, the w one thing I would encourage people to do is if you are considering doing a CIM qualification or any other training is have a look at where your strengths and weaknesses lie, where your interests are, and kind of work backwards really, because if there's, for example, a particular job role that you're interested in, start to pull out some of those things that they're looking for, some of the, uh, things that are looking for in the job description, you know, the um, desirables and the essential skills that they ask for. And some of them might be knowledges as well. And then think about which modules make up a CIM qualification. And then that might help you select your, your pathway. And in terms of the membership, membership is different to different people. Um, but uh, essentially, as you move through your career from studying member, where you get a certain amount of access to support you in your career at that time you might want to progress more into the space where you're um, improving your membership or, or, or going up an, a notch where you're, at, you're getting access to more CPD content. The CPD content is, is really where you continue to develop throughout your career and when AI comes in and when sustainable marketing comes in and all these new things come about you have to move and you have to evolve. Yeah yeah Absolutely. And I think that's quite interesting. If you're like a, a young marketer coming into the market as well, you will end up working in a business where people who might be a lot older than you have done things for a certain amount of time. And you'll realize that things you maybe just learned is something that's new to them. Um, and that's that's a really in, in, interesting position to be in. And that's why I do I do think the CIM membership is highly valuable because I, you have a lot of confidence going into that game. This is fresh off the press. This is new stuff. I, you know, I'm not learning off a marketing textbook. I was I learned at uni maybe 20 years ago. I'm going. This is the new approach, and I can take this into work and have those interesting discussions about it. Brilliant, brilliant. Love that. And, and um, Andy and I didn't go into this session just trying to plug loads of CIM products. Mm -hmm. So um, I appreciate you giving a nod to to, to CIM there. Um, uh, just to remind everybody, you still have time to put some questions in there. Um, and otherwise, we're gonna we're gonna look to to wrap up the session in, in the next few minutes. Um, I just wondered whether you could talk, so you talked a lot about campaigns and strategy and things like that. Um, is there a particular skill or key skill that you feel you need to learn to apply to ABM in, in terms of strategic um, skill? Yeah, um, you, need to, you really need to learn how to structure uh, campaigns over time. You need, you, need to under, you need to make very clear expectations on what you're going to do and when. So for me, as a growth marketer, as I was talking before about someone who wants to grow new business, my, it, my skill is about understanding all the elements of marketing and putting them in a plan. So one of the things, again, I learned when I, when I started studying marketing was about integrated marketing campaigns. I know that 
It doesn't matter if I just do a social campaign. It doesn't matter if I just build a website. It doesn't matter if I build a guide. If they don't work together and they, you don't create multiple touch points with your audience, you're not going to engage them properly. So learning, understanding that marketing theory, but understanding that um, if you to build a good campaign, to be really good, you need to know that you, you need to understand different methods of communication and you need to learn how to make them work together to show you a group result rather than showing you, well, there's a, well, there's a website that visit. Oh, they, he clicked on that social. Oh, they came to that event. It's now going, I actually did that deliberately. And they, the idea is they all knock onto each other to show intent, to create a lead, which means they've won. Like, it's about understanding how to take someone through a journey. Understanding customer journey is really, really important. Brilliant, thank you. Um, so unless we get any more questions from those tuning in live, um, I'd like to finish on something that um, I tend to ask everybody that, that comes on these sessions. And that is um, rolling forwards, and you can consider ABM or uh, another another line of work. What is it that you would like to be better at, and um, what are you going to do about that? Um, you know what? I'd like to be better at uh, pitching and getting kind of crazy brave concepts out into the world, because I think that like so so I'm, I'm quite lucky I work in a team like where I can be like oh I think we should do this and people are like yeah okay but I I'd love so it's great what I do in ABM but ABM isn't everything that I do right ABM is just something I use as part of a wider role right I I love as a marketer getting into a space of creative people who think differently to me and I'd love to just keep doing this and to the point where people I walk in the room and people go oh no, Andy's coming with some crazy idea. Uh, but then it turns into something that works. Like that's the most rewarding thing for marketing, going from I'm gonna work with this person, this person, and we're gonna make something from scratch, blank piece of paper, and we create something clever and creative. And then I'd love to be better at driving that into a team and showing how that's grown into something that's made us better. Um, I know that's a very intangible answer, but it's it's that's the joy of marketing, right? create something and get a result. But the journey and, and, and engaging stakeholders on the way and getting them to buy in and getting them as excited as you are, that's that's the trick. Yeah, and, and I, I think that's a really, really important skills to have because you can have the greatest ideas in the world, but they mean nothing yeah. if no one understands yeah. them. Yeah, brilliant. Um, we did actually get um, a, a, another question in. Um, do you have any digital tools that you can recommend for ABM? Um, I would assume that that is about sort of third party platforms and things like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, this is where I'm going to get loads of emails from people who are trying to work with me, reminding me about the things that they offer. Um, uh, there are loads uh, and I would heavily recommend them. So firstly, um, it doesn't matter what size your business is. It doesn't matter how big or how small. You need some kind of CRM system, right? So you need some kind of database system. Um, if you're a very small independent business, you need to still use your things like, um, uh, uh, you know, like your MailChimp. So you've got to make sure you're collecting data because if you don't collect data and you don't collect information about your accounts, you need to make sure uh, you're not you're not showing that you've got intent. So stuff like making sure you've got good use of Salesforce, stuff like that is crucial for a start. Get your data right get your world there so you can analyze it. Um, there are lots of companies out there that use, uh, who, who deliberately build you software or guides or brochures and then give you all that data analysis back. Uh, like in, um, so PDFs are dying, right? We used to send PDFs so it's, as emails to people all the time. Go, Look at this document I've made for you, it looks really fancy. Uh, there's lots of companies out there now that will make interactive call guides for people now. There's a company I've worked with recently called uh, Turtle. Check them out, that's Turtle about the E. And they make interactive e-guides that show when someone's accessed a document, what page they've lingered on, what link they've clicked. And I can just look at that and go, great, I've got a target. Really good for ABM. We also do personalization features where they can go, you know that document you've made? I'll change the logo and the name for you like that. And that's the kind of AI element coming into it. Um, so companies like that do a lot of really good work. Um, there's lots of companies that try to take all your data for you in a good way and then automate processes for you to help ABM, such as um, delivering mail. So go, okay, 
okay, Andy, I can see from your mailing list that you've got this guy called John who opened your website. What I'm going to do as a piece of software is email him a brochure and go, thanks for viewing the website. Here's something that you might be interested in. And like all of this stuff. So I don't want to name too many companies and seem biased, but there are there are kind of definitely like delivery automated, automated, auto, automation companies. There are lots of e-guide companies. Otherwise, it's about, for ABM, it's less about trying to create too much new stuff. ABM is actually about taking all the things that you do really well and funneling it to that account in the best way possible. Actually, my job isn't about creating loads of content. My job is going, MHR does amazing stuff, and we put loads of really cool content out there. How do I make sure it's delivered to that account at the right time, and how do I personalize it and tweak it so it looks like it's made for them? Brilliant, thank you. Um, we did lose you slightly, or I certainly did lose you a little bit there. Could you just quickly just list the um, the brands that you, and tools that yeah. you talked about? Uh, have a look at companies like Turtle who do interactive e-guides. Um, uh, they and they they will give you analysis and track how those guides perform, so you can uh, use your targeting better. Um, have a look at companies like, to be honest, just Google data or intent. Uh, right, and then you'll get loads of companies that will tell you how they're tracking the people you're targeting. Um, but mainly it's about you, you need to understand what your marketing mix is, but you need a good software um, CRM system, you need, a, you need a sales force, you need an emailing system, and you need something that's going to deliver this content and track the data. That's your priority. The rest is what you already do as a business for the account. Put it into chat GPT, right, and they'll, they'll give you the answers. Yeah, let's not have a long discussion about chat GDP and making content because that could go on forever, couldn't it? That, that's for another another day. Yeah. Right, um, I'm, I'm going to wrap this up now. Uh, I'm going to say thank you again, Andy. Uh, really good talking to you. Um, uh, it's great to get proper insight into into your world. So thanks for thanks for being so honest there and, and dealing with questions off the cuff as well. And thanks to those that tuned in. And thank you for your questions. I hope you have a great rest of the day and find that useful.